I want to welcome Agile XRM to the podcast. I've known the people at Agile XRM for the past 12 years. I've seen how their business process management tool can add massive value to complex organizational processes in sectors such as finance and government. If you have complex processes or a need for dialogues on the Power Platform or Dynamics 365, take a look at how this BPM tool can add value. You can find them at agilexrm.com or check out the show notes for more details. Welcome to the MVP Show. My intention is that you listen to the stories of these MVP guests and are inspired to become an MVP and bring value to the world through your skills. If you have not checked it out already, I do a YouTube series called How to Become an MVP. The link is in the show notes. With that, let's get on with the show. Today's guest is from Russia. He works for Aware IT as a managing partner. He got his first MVP in 2016, so he's been an MVP for some time. You can check out uh, in the show notes, take a look, and I'll place his LinkedIn, Twitter, website, etc. Alexander, welcome to the show. Hello. Hello, Mark. Hey, good to have you on the show. Um, I always like to understand where, where people come from before we, we get into the show. So can you tell us a bit about uh, what you do when you're not working, where you live uh, uh, in Russia, and, uh, and, and what's the best thing when it comes to food in your culture? Well, I live in St. Petersburg. At least I have a flat in St. Petersburg. Uh, however, I have to travel quite a lot, um, and I still travel quite a lot between the cities and also between the countries. Um, normally, I don't spend much free time with family because I have to sacrifice a lot of that time uh, to learning and education and, and also a lot of work. Um, however, I do enjoy my kids. I have uh, two sons uh, with almost 10 years difference between them. Uh, so uh, that's the the thing I enjoy the most. Nice, nice, nice. Well, talking about the food, I actually try to maintain my diet because I have to uh, fight with, with gaining the weight a little bit. But I enjoy uh, seafood. And when I come to Seattle or Hamburg or other um, nice city where we have some conference or whatsoever sessions I have to handle, uh, I enjoy seafood very much. Nice, nice. Now, I understand. Correct me if I'm wrong. You're also a regional director. Is that right? Yes, that's true. Actually, I'm double MVP in two categories in business applications and Asia. And I also have a head of uh, Microsoft regional director. So I, these are a little bit two different roles. While being MVP, you try to connect the technical community with, with the product group. Uh, being a regional director, you try to connect the, the business community with, with the top management of Microsoft and, and try to explain the, the difficulties business has with Microsoft products in my region. Yeah, this is so good. This is so good. So tell us a bit about your story. How did you get into technology to start with? Um, honestly, I came from finance part and I'm um, still a state certified auditor and I work as chief accountant and uh, uh, financial controller and auditor all my life before I came to IT and IT has been always kind of a uh, hobby. And when, within my working experience in a group, in a consultancy group of companies as an auditor, they thought the kind of start up a new business inside the group of companies to provide IT services to our customers. I thought that this might be a good opportunity for me to uh, combine hobby and, and, and work. And this is how we came to IT. And then uh, Microsoft at that time already has been quite an important part of, of, the, of the technologies. And uh, probably, you know, at the moment, there is no other vendor that offers such a wide stack of, of business applications and generally IT solutions, specifically in the cloud. Um, 
those days, it was 2006, 2007, uh, we already saw that this, this is actually the case. Microsoft is the vendor that would offer quite a lot. So we focused on that and we never regret. At some point in time, well, we started to deal with, with ERP implementations and, and business applications. And uh, I was personally focused on Microsoft Dynamics, NAV, Navision those days. Now it's uh, Dynamics 365 Business Central. Um, then we we also started to look at AX, which is now uh, finance and operations part of, of Dynamics family. Uh, and then slowly we started to look more to other offerings of Microsoft, like Azure and, and Power Platform. And those days I was a little bit suffering and tied up with, with lack of information. You know, uh, product had bugs. Uh, new product came quite often and there has been lack of information how to use them. Uh, there has been a lot of ideas how to improve the products and better use the products. And local Microsoft was not able to give me the, the right answers. Uh, honestly, they, most of the questions I asked, they, they, they couldn't answer themselves. Um, so this is how I came to idea to become MVP because I have heard that basically it can give you kind of better communication with, with a product group. And I learned that actually I, I'm already doing quite a lot of daily uh, business that MVPs are doing. I'm sharing the knowledge. I'm working with communities. I help with with moderating and answering questions in forums. I write blogs. and um, So I applied, and quite quickly my application went through. And then it allowed me to enjoy quite a lot of benefits that, that my MVP program offers. And the, the most benefit, biggest benefit for me is, is actually to have an option to influence and modify the product that would be used by millions of people all over the world. Like me alone can affect how the product would look like and millions of people would use that. It's like, wow. And I also enjoy the, the communication with the product group because, you know, product team, they are like really, really crazy guys. They are so focused on, on, the, on the product. They, they tell that we would do the, the best ever product in the world. And um, they, they like even doing permanent tattoos on their hands with a logotype of the products. <laughs> and when I come to meet them, like they invite for a couple of days with pizza and beer, like let's generate new features, um, so on. I'm, 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 I'm so uh, like, uh, like electricity comes through my body. I mean, it's, I'm, I'm so fired up returning from these kind of sessions. And, and, and this is the passion I'm, I'm uh, trying to pass through to, to communities and to, to other partners and to local Microsoft as well. I like it. I like it. Tell me, how much are you seeing the Power Platform and Dynamics 365 Finance um, uh, together as an in projects? Are you using the, those two technologies together? Oh yes, absolutely. And um, first of all, we personally have been always focused on, on on finance part and localization part and creating the solutions that kind of. Uh, um, automate the daily life of, of finance people. And when Power Platform appears, uh, it has been a significant step forward using Dynamics products. Of course, uh, the, the concept of low code, no code is, is amazing. Uh, the, the Power BI opportunities are also amazing because you don't need anymore to create uh, outdated uh, the reports that we used in Dynamics were kind of um, outdated in that sense. And people would like not only to to see the the report in, in order to learn what happened, they want to learn why it happened. 
And if you want to learn why it happened, you want to play with figures. You want to drill down, you want to filter, you want to do insights. And this is what, what Power BI offers. But <clears throat> this is not, not, not the only thing they want. They want to know what will happen. And this where the, the power of, of uh, machine learning algorithms and AI is, is coming in. And business applications from Microsoft uh, started to use the, the predictions and uh, machine learning algorithms already years ago. And they are like embedded inside business applications, uh, in, even in, in the code structure, for example, in NAV, the, there are even functions to, to, to do that. Uh, and then on, on the very top level, you actually, people uh, would like to learn uh, the answer to the question, what should I do? So not only what will happen, but the suggestions, what should I do? And this is where AI is, is, is the most powerful thing at the moment. And this is where we go. Finance people specifically, they, they want suggestions, of what will happen, what should I do? And this is what business applications from Microsoft offers them. Nice, nice. Tell me, you know, I, I assume you have like a lot of MVPs, people asking you, how do I become an MVP? What should I do? Uh, that type of thing. What recommendation do you give? I'm actually, through those years, I have been consulting several people and like about dozen of MVP received their, their, their titles based on my coaching. Uh, so I, I'm interested to get more MVPs in my region and general in the world because this, I strongly believe we have lack of MVPs and lack of people who transfer the knowledge to communities, to universities, to schools, to, to startups. And my pers- I mean, as you probably know, you can't uh, get this, this title just by passing a certain uh, concrete steps or certifications whatsoever. Uh, you have to be kind of uh, noticeable, uh, in that sense, um, but I have my own formula. If if you dedicate approximately half an hour, forty five minutes every day of your time to do the activities that are counted, it's like moderating forums or answering questions or uh, speaking on the on the on the events or organizing events, posting blogs. Uh, giving feedbacks to product groups, uh, using GitHub with, with your, your projects. So in, in the average, if you spend like half an hour every day, in half a year, nine months, most likely you could be nominated. Yeah, I like it. That's, that's really good advice. What, um, you know, you've seen some changes, particularly in the product team, you know, from Microsoft business applications, probably in the last four years, we've seen a massive growth, um, you know, in the number of engineers now involved in biz apps. And of course, the 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 bridge between biz apps and Azure is becoming very blurred right there. You, you would hardly ever build a solution that you weren't going to use Azure and vice versa. What's What's been the biggest change that you've noticed or that's had you excited that you've seen in the past four, four or five years? No, I think the biggest change I have noticed is when Satya came to power inside Microsoft and he managed to turn the Microsoft around uh, from from a vendor that historically has been said, this is what you want. We know better what you want. Take this. And they're kind of living in their own pink cloud <laughs> in that sense. Uh, and, and Satya managed to turn that around well, now Microsoft is constantly asking us, tell us what you want. We will give you this. This has been the, the major drastic change in all the applications, not only business applications. And now many people, not only MVPs, they can actually suggest things. And there is a pipeline of suggestions that Microsoft actually processes and Every half a year, they process thousands of, of suggestions. And they implement new features based on what actually market demands. And this is very open attitude 
to build up the products. It's it's uh, it's very close now to crowdsource. If you if you look at at what is being published it in terms of documentation, which we as normal users we can edit. If you look at the code of the applications, which we as users can branch out and, 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 and suggest changes, and Microsoft actually can include them into the standard functionality. <laughs> this is very close now to crowdsourcing. And this is like, wow, this, this has been the, the change that, that I enjoy because this is the only way how you can create the most modern applications. And there is, again, no any other vendor that does this. It's 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 the 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 feature of Microsoft. It's now in, in the blood. In, uh, Microsoft creates such a products that uh, uh, the most recent, the most up to date, and this is what customers enjoy. At the moment, we live in a world that that changes actually quite quite a lot and quite quickly. And most customers they would like to invest in such an IT landscape that allows them to modify and adapt to this change uh, without significant cost and quite quickly. So we usually recommend Microsoft stack of technologies as the one that matches this, this expectation. Hey, thanks for listening. I'm your host, business application MVP, Mark Smith, otherwise known as the NZ365 guy. If you like the show and want to be a supporter, check out buymeacoffee.com forward slash NZ365 guide. Thanks again and see you next time.